Welcome to Math with Professor V. Here is your latest integral of the day. We have the indefinite integral of the square root of x squared minus 1 over x to the fourth dx. Now, this one comes straight from my Calc 2 class. We went over trig sub yesterday. This was one of their homework exercises, and I thought it was like a really lovely problem, straightforward, great for those of you who might be learning or needing to review your trig sub. So there's three different trig subs that we use. One involves sine, one involves tangent, one involves secant. And it all depends on this expression here that's underneath the radical. Now, it doesn't always have to be underneath the radical, but most of the time it is. When you have the variable quantity squared minus a constant, you use secant as your trig function for the trig sub. So in this case, my constant a is just 1. That's a squared. When you have an expression of the form x squared minus a squared, we let x equal a secant theta. So for this particular problem, I'm going to go ahead, let x equal 1 secant theta, and then I differentiate. So dx would be secant theta, tan theta, d theta, and then now I rewrite my whole integral in terms of theta. So here we go. I have integral square root. Upstairs, underneath the radical, I'm going to have secant squared theta minus 1 over x to the fourth would be secant theta to the fourth times, well, what's dx? I have it right here. Secant theta, tan theta, d theta. All of that. Secant theta, tan theta, d theta. Lovely. Now, the whole point of trig sub is so that you can use a Pythagorean identity to simplify this expression. So secant squared theta minus 1, I'm going to replace that with tan squared theta underneath the radical. And then I still have secant theta, tan theta, d theta over here, over, and then this is secant to the fourth theta. Okay, square root of tangent squared theta. Now, technically, that's absolute value of tan theta, but when we do trig sub, we always restrict our angle theta, so you don't have to worry about the absolute value. So basically, think of it like this. This is tangent theta. I've got another tangent theta right here, so that's tan squared theta. And then this secant in the numerator will cancel, so I'll just have secant cubed in the bottom. So let's rewrite what's left over. So we've got integral tan squared theta, over secant cubed theta d theta. Okay, now hopefully you've practiced some integrals before where you have a mix of powers of tangents and secants and usually we do some u subs. It's just when they're written like this, when we have a quotient, it's not as nice or straightforward sometimes. So what I like to do in this case is just rewrite everybody in terms of sines and cosines. So tan squared theta in the numerator, that's sine squared theta over cosine squared theta. And then if we have secant cubed theta in the denominator, well, that's cosine cubed theta, really, over 1 d theta. Oh, now we just have cancellation of our dreams and a beautiful integral emerge. Look at this. Integral sine squared theta, cosine theta, d theta. And when you have powers of sines and cosines and you've got this little odd man out, it's just screaming for a u sub. Hey guys, do a U sub. So what I just highlighted, cosine theta, d theta, you want that to be absorbed. You want that to be du. So then think backwards, you would need to be very good. Just sine theta, not sine squared theta, just sine theta. So then du is cosine theta, d theta. Fabulous. And then we can rewrite this integral now in terms of u. So it's going to be u squared du. Boom. Integrating's easy peasy, one third u cubed plus c, and then now back sub. So this is going to be one third sine cubed theta plus c, and then we have to go back to the original variable of the problem, which is x. So remember, we made the substitution. We let x equal secant theta. Okay, well that's the same as saying x over one is secant theta. So it's triangle time. Draw yourself a cute little triangle. Put theta somewhere. And then remember, secant of theta is the ratio of the hypotenuse over the adjacent side. So this would be the hypotenuse, this is the adjacent side. Using the Pythagorean theorem, the missing side is the square root of x squared minus 1. And no surprise, we saw that expression in the original integral. Okay, from here we're going to use the triangle. So we have 1 third. I need sine of this theta. We'll use the triangle, and then I cube that expression. 
So sine is the ratio of the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So that would be square root of x squared minus 1 over the hypotenuse is x. This all gets cubed, and then I just have plus c. And then to clean it up, what would you do? I would probably write the numerator as x squared minus 1 to the 3 halves instead, and then put this like 3 down here with an x cubed plus c. I think that's the snazziest way to write your answer. But always check with your instructor if they have a preference, you know. Make them happy, get the points, get the grades you want. Anyways, if you need help with trig sub, I have several videos and plenty more integrals on this playlist where I work through trig sub examples. And it's just a matter of really practicing and getting the routine down. And you have to know your trig identities. Double angles pop up sometimes too in some trickier ones. So if you need to see more trig sub, let me know in the comments down below. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already. You can also follow me on Instagram, TikTok for little behind the scenes clips of my classes and other content. And thank you guys so much for your support. Let me know in the comments if you solved it differently. I'm curious. Usually this is like a straightforward trig sub problem, but some of you, I know you like to do something fancy schmancy every now and then. Um, so I'd love to hear how you guys solve these integrals and I will be back sooner than later with more content for you guys. Bye.